الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. So again, بارك الله فيكم. That we have completed another evening with the Salat al-Taraweeh. And after the Salah, we continue again with some words pertaining to ilm, the seeking of knowledge, and also with respect to our position with the ulama of al-Islam, the ulama of da'wah al salafiyya The first thing that I wish to begin with today, and remember if you consider what we mentioned yesterday with respect to how knowledge is taken away, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take away knowledge by stripping it from the hearts of the people, but rather knowledge is taken away by the death of the ulama. And as it occurs in a narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, and then all of the people come to one level, and thereafter they are destroyed. So when the ulama, they pass away, all of the people come to one level. And as we mentioned in the narration yesterday, that people will take the ignorant ones as their leaders, seeking from them fatwa, and they will answer their questions and give them, and give them fatwa, leading themselves astray and leading others astray. So it is important that we heed that advice of that noble companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that has been collected by Imam al-Darimi in his Sunan and many of the other scholars they refer to this tremendous statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wherein he said learn knowledge before it is taken away and the taking away of knowledge is the death of the people of ilm the death of the scholars so learn knowledge whilst it is still with you, whilst you still have the ability, while there are ulama that are alive, while their works are still present, and their effect upon the people is present, take from the ulama. <coughs> Once you have understood this affair of knowledge and the importance of knowledge that we have been speaking about for the last few days, then after that knowledge and action upon the ilm, an action upon that which knowledge necessitates, which is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because having knowledge without action is of no benefit. Because the zakat of ilm is amal. That when you pay zakat upon your wealth, it is to purify your wealth. When you seek knowledge, how do you purify that knowledge? You purify that knowledge meaning that you pay zakat upon that knowledge by amal, by acting upon it. And thereafter that you call others to it. You call your wives and your children, your relatives, your brothers and your sisters. You invite them to tawheed, you invite them to the sunnah, you invite them to follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You invite them to that affair that will save them from the destruction of this world and the fitna of this world, and the decoration of this world, and the corruption of this dunya, and that which will save them from the punishment of the hellfire, and the punishment in the grave. And that is of course that you invite them to the sharia, to the kitab, and the sunnah, and the way of the sahaba. So the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be paramount in our minds. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَسِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ That he said, say to them, O Prophet, this is my straight path. This is my straight path and I call to Allah upon sure knowledge, me and whomsoever follows me. 
Glory be to Allah the Most Perfect. And I am not from those who associate partners with Allah in worship. I am not from the mushrikeen. This is the call of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is what we say to the people. Hadihi Sabili, this is my path. What is my path? The path of Sunnah. The path of the Kitab and the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I call to Allah upon Ilm, upon Basira, short sighted knowledge. Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Me and those who follow me, meaning that if you truly follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you will call to the path of Allah upon Ilm, not upon Jahl, not upon ignorance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned likewise, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in speech, in قول, than the one who calls to Allah, invites the people to Allah, and he works righteous deeds. Not that he just calls, but he himself is an example to others, a qudwa to others, just as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the uswatun hasana, was the final example. Then likewise we are examples for others. When we speak, we speak with truth. That we are honest, we are trustworthy, we do not hide the truth, we enjoin that which is good, and we forbid that which is evil. This is the example, and we speak with fine manners. We do not use foul language. We deal with the people in the best way. We don't steal from them. Nor do we argue with them. Nor do we shout in the marketplaces. Nor do we use bad language. Nor are we foul to the people. Nor are we rude to our parents. Nor are we bad to our wives. Nor are we bad to our children. This is the fine example. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا He, he works righteous deeds. So this is what makes the person the best of the people in the sight of Allah. مَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا He calls to Allah and he works righteous deeds. And he says, I am وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That indeed I, are from, I am from those who have submitted in will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الْإِسْتِسْلَامُ لِلَّهِ بِالتَّوْهِيدِ I have submitted to Allah in to, with tawheed. And I'm obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not from the mushrikeen. It occurs in a hadith reported by Imam Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali radiallahu anhu that Allah guides through you one man, O oh Ali, that one person is guided to Islam through you, O oh Ali. It is better for you than red camels, meaning it is better for you than the finest of the riding beasts. The finest of the means of transport that Allah guides one person, that you called him to Allah. You invited him to worship Allah. So he freed himself from shirk and kufr. He freed himself from the worship of others besides Allah and he entered into Islam because you, O oh Ali radiallahu anhu gave him da'wah. It is better for you than the finest of the means of transport, the finest of the riding beasts. So we call to Allah, but we call to Allah upon Basira. Not upon Jahl, not upon ignorance as some of the people have misunderstood. You find the most ignorant of people, doesn't know anything about the deen of Islam. And you say to him, Ya Akhi, you shouldn't be giving da'wah. You don't know what you're saying, you don't know what you're talking about. You claim that you invite to Islam, you claim that you want to rectify, but you have no knowledge of the religion. He says, Ya Akhi, leave me alone. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu said, Balligu anni wa law ayah. Convey from me even if it be an ayah. He doesn't understand that this da'wah is built upon ilm. This miskin doesn't know that even to convey a single ayah from the book of Allah or a hadith of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it cannot be done except after a person understands what this ayah means and the tafsir of the ayah and what the mufassireen have said and what the Prophet ﷺ said about the ayah and what the sahaba understood with respect to the ayah and what the scholars of hadith have said with respect to the understanding of the hadith. So a person when he calls to Islam, he must be a talibul ilm. So what does the jahil do? 
Does he not call? Yes, he calls, but so how does he call if he doesn't have knowledge? He invites the people to the dars. Or he gives a person a book. Or he sets a good example for them, and he's honest with them. He says to them, I am not a person of knowledge. But this little bit that I know, I know it to be the haqq. Like for example, that you should not be worshipping the graves. You should not make sajda in front of the graves. You should not go to the kuhan or to the fortune tellers or to the soothsayers. That you should not seek your star signs in the pages of astrology in the newspapers. I know that you're not supposed to drink. I know that you're not supposed to smoke. I know that you're not supposed to listen to music. I know that you're not supposed to be looking at women. I know that much. So the little bit that the person knows, even if he is not a student of knowledge, it is permissible for him to convey without argumentation, without becoming rude, and without turning them away from Islam. So the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the duty and the role of the Anbiya and the Rasul. So when a person gives da'wah to Allah, then he must understand that I am following the example and the footsteps of the, of the, uh, of the messengers of Allah and the, compa- and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the maqsood of that or the intent behind that is that the da'wah to Allah is by speech and action. Speech that you call to Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa call to. Action that you act upon that which you are calling to. You don't tell someone to not look at women and you are looking at women. You don't tell someone don't watch movies and you are watching movies. You don't tell someone don't drink alcohol and you are drinking alcohol. You don't tell someone to lie and you are the biggest liar. So the, so the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when the people look at you, that they say, MashaAllah, whatever he says, he does. He is a person of his word. He does not break his word. Exactly what they used to say to the Messenger of Allah, about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa That they knew he was Al-Ameen, the trustworthy one. They knew that he never lied. In fact, when he said to them, if I was to tell you that there's an army at, about to attack Mecca behind that mountain, would you believe me? They said, yes, we would believe you. Why? Because they knew that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truthful and honest and trustworthy. You could leave something with him and come back years later and you would find it with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Aisha radiallahu anha said, that he was never known to be foul-mouthed. He never used rude language. And he never used to shout in the marketplaces. That wasn't the habit of Allah's Messenger sallallahu even the mushrikeen. That they said, if you told us, O Muhammad, that there was an army about to attack Mecca, we would believe you. So when he said to them, I am telling you that there is Allah and you have to worship Him alone and abandon the idols, then they wouldn't accept that from him. Woe to you, O Muhammad. Is this what you gathered us together for? This they wouldn't believe him. But they knew in their heart of hearts, this man has never lied. He has never been untruthful. He has never been rude. He has never attacked anyone. Rather, every single trait of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the opposite to that. If he saw someone poor, he would feed them. If he saw someone destitute, he would give them shelter. He was always good to his relatives. When he saw the girls getting buried in the, buried in the dirt, just because they were girls, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would find that an abomination and he would never accept it from them. They knew nothing but good from him. That's why sometimes when a believer gives dawah to a person, a person may say to him, do you believe what you say? He say, yes, I believe what I say, then I believe what you believe. Because they don't know you except for the truth. This was like Abu Bakr. They knew, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why as soon as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him dawah, he accepted straight away. Because he could never, he made, this man has never lied. Impossible. That's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why he is as-siddiq radiallahu anhu. Uthman likewise. That's why the first man to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Abu Bakr as-siddiq. The first one to have iman in him and that which he brought was Abu Bakr as-siddiq. The first child was Ali, the first woman was Khadija and the first slave was Bilal radiallahu anhu. 
They saw, they knew what Muhammad was. That's why Khadija could, she would never disbelieve him. She said, it is impossible. It is impossible. Because you are the one, Muhammad, you are the one, my husband, who feeds the poor, looks after the destitute, keeps the ties of kinship. This is you, O Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake you. So when a person gives da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives da'wah through his speech and through his action. And I have seen a person giving da'wah to someone that he knew for many years. And that person said, do you believe what you're telling me? He said, yes. He said, then I believe what you believe. Because I, don't know, I do not know you except to be a person of haq, a person of truth, a person who does not lie. What is the first thing that we call them to? The first thing that we call them to is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not their wealth that we are after. It is not their patronage that we are after. It is not their servitude that we are after. What we want from them is their goodness. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that hadith, reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, where he said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen. Why did he send Mu'ad? Because Mu'ad was an alim. And he was a scholar. He sent Mu'ad bin Jabal to Yemen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the most knowledgeable and the, of the halal and the haram in this ummah is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. We do not send ignorant people to give da'wah. He is sending him to a qawm. إِنَّكَ تَقْدُ إِنَّكَ تَقْدِمُ عَلَى قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ That indeed, that you are going to a people from the people of the book. I'm sending you to a qawm. He's sending them to a nation in Yemen. Go and give them da'wah. This is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Prophet Sallallahu said, that he's a, a stride in front, of the, uh, in front of the rest of the ulama, Yawm al-Qiyamah, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. So I'm sending you, إِنَّكَ تَقْدِمُ عَلَى قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ I'm sending you to a people from the people of the book, or that you are going to a people from the people of the book. So let the first thing that you invite them to, is أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى is that they worship, that they single out Allah alone with worship. فَإِذَا عَرَفُوا ذَلِكَ And if they accept that from you, and they acknowledge that from you, then inform them that Allah has obligated upon them the five daily prayers fi yawmihim wa laylatihim in their day and in their night. And if they accept that from you, O Mu'ad, then tell them that they are to pay the zakah to be taken from their wealthy and given to their poor. And be careful of taking from the best of the wealth of the people. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, he called to the most important thing first. So our da'wah to our parents, to our families, to our brothers, to our sisters, to our children, to our neighbors, to our relatives, to the people that we work with, to the people that we meet, the first thing that we invite them to is that they establish the tawheed of Allah. They might say, but I'm already a Muslim. But you see many of the Muslims today who are worshipping others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that they are violating their tawheed or some of them even nullifying their tawheed waliyadu billah that they are doing actions that nullify their Islam because they have not understood the issue of tawheed maybe they are making tawaf of the grave or sajda to the grave or slaughtering to the dead or in their greatest hour of need they will raise their hands and say Ya Abdul Qadir Madat Oh Abdul Qadir help me Oh Ali help me Ya Rasulullah help me in their time of need, instead of calling upon Allah, they'll call upon others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is shirk. Because isti'ana and seeking aid and support and help is only from Allah. Only you do we worship and only your aid do we seek. So the first thing that we invite them to is that they worship Allah alone. If they accept that, then inform them of the prayer. 
How many of the ummah today are praying? They say, oh, leave these issues alone. The most important issue is the attacks of the enemy against the Muslims. The ideological attack of the enemy against the Muslims. No doubt that they are attacking. Because the kuffar have always attacked the Muslims, either ideologically or physically. Either they've tried to infiltrate our ranks and destroy and corrupt Islam from within by sending in munafiqeen, or sending in false ideas and ideologies of the kuffar, or they have militarily attacked the Muslims. This has happened since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till now. Hasn't changed. Musaylama al-Kazzab. Musaylama, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu claimed that he was another prophet. He said, Muhammad, you're a prophet, and I'm a prophet also. So he wrote a letter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, this is a letter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a letter from Musaylama Rasulullah to Muhammad bin Abdullah Rasulullah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this is in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is the ideological attack. This is the attack upon the aqidah of the Muslimin. Right from the beginning. This likewise with Dhul Khawaisara al-Tamimi who stood in front of the Prophet sallallahu and he said, Adal ya Muhammad. He said, be just, O Muhammad, for indeed you are not just. Ittaqillah, O Muhammad. Fear Allah, O Muhammad. These attacks have come upon Rasulullah whilst he was alive by those who claimed to be Muslims. So the Prophet sallallahu wrote back to Musaylama and he said, this is from Muhammad, Rasulullah, to Musaylama al-Kazzab, the liar. So the Prophet sallallahu rebuked Opposition to the Aqeedah. Rebuked opposition to those people to infiltrate the ranks of the Muslims to cause corruption within. This infiltration has not stopped till this day. Sometimes that inf infiltration is to just damage or to make, make weak the foundations of Islam. Or some of them they are brought in to utterly annihilate Islam, like those who claim that there is a prophet after the prophet Muhammad, like Musaylim al-Kazzab, and others who resemble him up until this time. The Jalun Kazzabun, as the Prophet ﷺ described them, great liars. So Islam has always had its attack. But the message of Islam at its core has remained the same. It doesn't change. It doesn't change over time. Just like the, every single prophet, Thousands and thousands of prophets that were sent before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and hundreds and hundreds of messengers that were sent before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did they call the people to? وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الدَّاغُوتِ We did not send a messenger except to every nation, calling them to the worship of Allah, and away from the worship of the false deities of the false gods. This is what the prophets and messengers did. So why should we now, if this has been the case for centuries and centuries and thousands of years, nation after nation, Ya qawmi ibadullah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. Oh my people, worship Allah alone, for you have no deity worthy of worship besides Him. Every prophet would say that to their people. Worship Allah, worship Allah, worship Allah. Don't worship other than Allah. Obey Allah, obey His messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That core message has remained. Why should that change over 1400 years? If it has not changed over thousands of years, why should it change over 1400 years? Why? Because the people have turned away from the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen, he was commanded with the command of Allah that Allah gave to the prophets and messengers. That the first thing that you call them to is that they worship none but Allah. This is the greatest need in this land. This is the greatest need in the subcontinent. This is the greatest need in Africa. This is the greatest need in Asia. This is the greatest need in Europe and North America and Latin America and in Australia and in the whole of the dunya. The greatest need of mankind is Tawheed. That they turn to Allah alone. That they seek from Allah alone. That they establish the prayer for Allah alone. That they love for Allah alone. And they hate for Allah alone. And they give for Allah and they take for Allah. That they build their iman upon this foundation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the skies for them. And send them down an abundance of rain. And Allah will forgive them their sins. And Allah will give them children. And Allah will give them offspring that are righteous. And Allah will give them the wealth of the earth. And Allah will give them success in this life. And Allah will give them success in the hereafter. Allah will remove their hardships. And remove the enmity and hatred that they have amongst each other. If only they followed the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If only they called to what the Prophets called to. 
if only they clung to that which the Sunnah or that which the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to cling to. And that is the Kitab and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Naam, ballighu anni walaw ayah. Convey from me if it be an, even if it be an ayah. So we convey from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam the correct understanding of the deen and the correct understanding of the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Free from bid'ah, free from fabricated hadith, free from made up stories, free from these Sufi tales that you hear that men fly around on magic carpets or people are floating in the sky or men can walk upon water or men tread upon fire or they can tell you your future. Come to me and I'll write you something, put it around your neck and you'll find your beautiful wife. All of this is nothing but corruption and deviation from the revelation that, the, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with. So beware my brothers and sisters, that when we call to Allah, that we call to Allah upon basira, upon ilm, and we call to the priorities, tawheed, rectification of the aqeedah, salah, in accordance to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not the prayer that you make up yourselves. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray like you have seen me pray. O kama qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we pray like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed. Not any old prayer. Tawheed, not your understanding of Tawheed, but Tawheed in the understanding of the Kitab and the Sunnah and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Wa jazakumullahu khairan wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا